On behalf of the organizers, uh, we are one of the organizers, the Center to Combat uh, Corruption and Cronism, together with uh, Nottingham University. So I do need to say some thank yous, first of all, to the university for agreeing to co-organize this very important uh, topic and event, which we hope uh, will eventually replicate in different universities and different settings. We have heard the whole morning uh, different cases of misconduct, of fraud, of negligence, bribery and outright corruption. We've heard it all, so it's not my role to give you further cases, although you know the high profile ones like, uh, say, the National Feedlot Corporation, NFC, remember Lembu, Cow and Condo? That was also highlighted in the Auditor General's report. And you have many other uh, controversies that are plaguing the public sector and our government administration. So my role today, the civil society voice, so to speak, is to connect us with what is happening in the government sector. What is the connection? Whose money is being wasted away like this? Whose money? Our money. Our money. It's not the private personal money of our Prime Minister. It's not money that's coming from the private sector, but it's our money. It's taxpayers' money. It's your money and it's my money that's being mismanaged in such great fashion. Now, the, the, one of the objectives of the forum today is really to talk about us. It's to talk about us Malaysian citizens watching this thing happen time after time. Every time the Auditor General's report is presented, there is a frenzy in the media about millions of money being wasted away, being siphoned away. And we are now at this time, particularly at this time, where we are also faced with a rising cost of living. We have subsidy cards, we have um, our bowl of uh, noodles costing double the amount that it used to cost two years ago. And it's just getting more and more difficult to sustain with our salaries not going up, but the rising cost of living going up. So the basic question that many people are asking is that if so much money was not lost to wastage and corruption, would the burden then be placed on us with subsidy cuts and rising cost of living? Would the government be better able to manage their finances, their funds, and how they administer the public sector? So I just wanted to start by um, mentioning a few things um, that we hope to drive from where we are today to where we want to go. We have heard our public institutions uh, tell us this morning from the Auditor General's office that presents the report to Parliament. Uh, the Auditor General has done a very good job on so many occasions in highlighting uh, the many episodes of wastage and leakage and corruption and so on. And then Public Accounts Committee investigates. And Tony Poisson eloquently said how the Public Accounts Committee hears cases Here's civil servants coming to speak and to testify. And then if there are elements of corruption, it goes to the MECC. But we are still unable to catch the corrupt. There was one example of an officer being caught for a bribe of 7,000 ringgit. What is 7,000 ringgit compared to the millions of money that's being wasted them, uh, away from the other examples that we heard? So the issue here is about going after the big fish as well, the grand corruption. Where is MECC uh, in, a, in being able to actually uh, assure the public that they are able to go after uh, the big fish? We also heard that there are tremendous legal limitations um, on the side of the MECC. So civil society, we have decided to form a campaign called the MECC Reform Initiative. I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. But in the meantime, 
I think one of the things we really need to press, you and I as Malaysian citizens, is really about defending our civic space, about pushing openness in government, or if you want to call it, a transparency revolution. Now, this is not uh, something Western. Before we get uh, uh, attacked by uh, the likes of Perkasa and Gang about adopting Western values, this is not. You just need to look at Indonesia as an example. How Indonesia is actually progressing so much because there is openness and there is a push from the public and civil society in actually getting governments to promote and provide a more open environment. So people everywhere are demanding for more openness. And it's really up to us as citizens to uh, effect changes, to actually tell government this is how we want public policy to be framed. Now can we do that in Malaysia? Can. No. Okay. <laughs> Only a few days ago we were reminded that we have the Sedition Act here to stay. Okay? So that means there will be further curtails on freedom of expression, further curtails on our right to associate, and freedom of the press, etc. etc. So it is an uphill battle. But are we just going to sit back and say, okay, let's do nothing, despite millions of money being wasted away like this? Are we going to just sit back and do nothing? No, right? We can't. We can't afford to actually just say, let them go on with the, with the kind of administration they are administering. So, how do we move from where we are today to where we want to go? We want a government that is more responsive, we want a government that's more accountable, and a government that's more responsible in managing our funds. Okay, we say it's a minority government in place today, but the point is they're there for the next couple of years and we need to actually look at what, the, what we can do as Malaysian citizens. Now, there is something, um, yeah, there's something here that's happening globally, uh, a movement that's bringing citizens and governments together. It's called the Open Government Partnership. Now, Indonesia is the chair this year. It's an interesting concept which actually brings citizens to the center of how public policy is shaped. It's a concept that actually makes government more accountable by forcing, so to speak, ensuring that citizens can become uh, bigger stakeholders in the whole process of shaping public policy. Now, where is Malaysia in this? Nowhere. They haven't adopted any of these principles as such. They haven't. There are 64 countries around the world that have already joined hands with the Open Government Partnership. Indonesia is the chair this year, and next year it goes to uh, Mexico and Latin America. So it becomes our responsibility to actually push for governments to be more open. Now I have to uh, commend the Selangor and uh, Penang state governments for uh, developing and enacting a Freedom of Information Act. Do you know that Selangor and Penang has a Freedom of Information Act? Yes. Have we used it? Have we used it? Okay. Now that is the second challenge or the second block because we also may have governments that are seemingly more progressive. They create um, enactments and laws that are uh, in the direction of more openness but it does not necessarily mean that uh, it's actively used and that onus is also on us to actively use the Freedom of Information Act. For example, we now know that the Selangor water deal, everyone knows about the Selangor water deal, right? We now know that the federal government does not want to release the agreement. Now 9.5 or 9.65 billion of our money has gone into the restructuring process of buying over the assets back uh, uh, to the Selangor government. Now, the 
Has any one of us thought or tried to uh, apply for the agreement to be made public uh, by the Salerno government? Would that be possible? Uh, using the freedom of information in Ekman. We may not succeed because it's a federal contract and it's a federal agreement. But my point here is that for us to actually become more proactive citizens in trying to obtain information that should belong to us. So freedom of information is um, one of the areas in driving this transparency revolution about trying to get governments to open their data. This might take forever, la, might take years. But at least we push on certain issues that we want to see uh, information on uh, contracts and on public agreements that concern us directly. The area of government integrity has been spoken about a lot. Fiscal transparency, I think the Auditor General mentioned it very specifically about weak uh, mechanisms in the uh, public sector and how it can be strengthened. Now, my point that I'm trying to make, and the, the emphasis here is on empowering citizens, transforming the relationship between citizens and government. Okay, now, so here is the announcement. We have a specific website. At, uh, the last AG report was presented on the 10th of November, 2014. So the Center to Combat uh, Corruption and Cronyism, we launched a specific website called combatcorruption.my. It is a website for you to have your say. To have your say because I think it's about time we take up the challenge of the Auditor General to look at the reports in totality, to look at the reports in full and to study what exactly are the uh, shortcomings, the misspending that's taken place, the fraud, the negligence, and so on. Now, this website, uh, you can actually already look, look it up in your mobile phones and your computer, or if you want a demonstration later, uh, my colleague Sean is actually sitting in the room there. We will be able to show it to you after the forum. The idea here is that we have summarized and digested the various ministries that have been audited. The summaries are uploaded. You can go in and you can have your say. Now, many have asked us, so what's the point of having our say when we can't actually do anything about anything? So even the institutions present here today are telling us that it's so difficult to move from point A to point B and to actually catch the corrupt offenders. So what can we do as citizens? This is a crowdsourcing website. It's a website to pull our opinions together. And this is because we believe in the power of public response. That if we develop a consciousness that is collective, and if we tell our, our governments in a collective voice that enough is enough, we're watching you and we're making our comments public, we're going to be using whatever mechanisms available, and we're going to be pushing and asking for more uh, institutions and structures to, to work uh, in the direction of openness and transparency. So the MECC Reform Initiative, which is um, uh, comprised of several civil society groups, uh, IDEAS is one of them, they are here in this room today, uh, C4, Transparency International is also here. Uh, and uh, CNBM, right? Citizens Network for a Better Malaysia. So there's four of us uh, who are now working with the Bar Council. Bar Council is also here to uh, start talking to members of parliament to get them to agree with some of the amendments and, and recommendations. If any of you are interested to take on uh, um, uh, more steps in this direction, please let us know because I think a, a greater pool of people coming together for this will be very important. But I'm just going to end by saying that uh, we should have trust in ourselves and hope in ourselves because it's so obvious that we cannot trust uh, the people who we have put in power or the minority government in place or even if it's 
um, any government in place, we always have to remind ourselves that we are the bosses. We put them there, we can take them off as well. So, in the meantime, this is one avenue, one avenue in which we can put together our views and the best, there's a bit of a uh, carrot here, the best uh, 150 or 200 comments depending on how, how many people actually uh, crowdsource into this get sent to the Public Accounts Committee as a citizen's audit report. Now, uh, the chairman of the uh, Public Accounts Committee, his name is uh, Datuk Nojazlan, he has uh, agreed to uh, accept the report and study the comments and also have discussions with the public on this. So, of course, we, we, we have heard how the Public Accounts Committee have also been doing a lot and not, to make, not have been able to achieve much of the results that they were hoping for. But we want to tell the MECC, the Public Accounts Committee, and the government at large that we are here as a voice uh, to offer uh, opinions in order to shape uh, public policy. So with that, I'd just like to end and say uh, thank you very much for um, for uh, listening to some of the uh, points in which citizens can actually uh, make and play a better role in uh, shaping uh, public policy. Now before I end, um, if I may, uh, Tantri Amrin, there have been several uh, recommendations from the public already uh, including um, Malaysians who live overseas, uh, particularly in uh, London and Melbourne. Uh, there are professional auditors, Malaysian auditors who have looked at the report, who are assisting C4 and uh, some others who are trying to look at making comments on the Auditor General's report. The first comment always is that the Auditor General's report it's not easy to digest. It's this fact. It's thick. It's full of info. And we're not even talking about the state reports. The state reports go up to this, to this high. So, of course, our Combat Corruption website has attempted to digest the info, but it is um, it's quite difficult and it's really uh, heavy. So for us to play a bigger role, these are some of the recommendations that if there could be some kind of a priority rating, like a traffic light system to indicate severity of findings, for example, because we understand that you have created a dashboard uh, and it's up on the uh, uh, Auditor General's website. Uh, even that's not so easy to extract info if you look at it. So whether something like that, when you keep saying red lights all the time, then you know that, ah, okay, this is something that we need to already look at. Or we keep saying yellow lights, and yellow lights means these are warning systems, uh, warning indications in which we can actually play a bigger role to study further. And to perhaps have a, 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 a section on thematic findings on uh, what kind of problems keep occurring over and over again and which ministries keep blowing up the same problem uh, time after time. And uh, I think the, the suggestion in relation to that is also to have a scorecard a scorecard that will assist ordinary Malaysians to assess the performance of the public sector and to facilitate feedback and responses on public uh, findings. So the red marks and the yellow marks all go into this. So finally, finally, the recommendation from us, uh, powerless or powerful citizens, depending on how we want to look at it, is to uh, demand that the transparency revolution starts to take place by, um, for example, the Public Accounts Committee having their hearings made public. I don't know, Tony, whether that's even something that we can uh, look at, 
for so that's one uh, suggestion. Second is for MACC upon the completion of their investigations to tell the public that this is what we have done, this is what we recommend to the other AG, which is the Attorney General, to take action. So which means you are closing a file and you're saying that, okay, this is the investigation that took place following the recommendation of PAC. This is what we recommend. And now it's left to the Attorney General to decide whether to press charges on that person or not. Uh, without this kind of uh, reporting and without this kind of disclosure to the public, it becomes very hard for you and me to be able to track and monitor how public spending is actually being uh, executed and implemented. So the, the openness of these uh, institutions are what we are uh, demanding and urging because without openness at this level, it will be very difficult to, uh, to, to track. So, for example, Budget 2015, we heard a very nice speech from our Prime Minister. But we have no clue at all how it's going to be executed and implemented. It's a black hole. We cannot see how it's going to be implemented. Later on, we will find out from the AG report, oh, there was mismanagement, there was this, there was that. But it's too late. So, the, the, the point really in trying to curb this is we are actually requesting whether this kind of openness uh, will be a good start for us citizens to actually get in and play a bigger role. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much.